Crypto holds the potential to deliver insane results in the markets. Imagine buying a coin and watching it go up 10, 50, 100x. You feel like you've absolutely made it. But then you wake up and boom, one day your funds have completely vanished from your wallet. And you realize... I've been hacked. Well, sadly, I hear this story all too often. And recently, I just saw another $4.4 million hack caused by a simple mistake that a lot of beginners and also experienced crypto holders make. And I want to break down exactly what that is in this video today and give you some tips on how to safely store your crypto so that you don't lose your seat on this rocket ship that's, you know, going to the moon. And so if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get ahead of the next crypto wave and become a blockchain master, I can show you how to do that step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this $4.4 million crypto hack that happened recently and break down what went wrong. So on October 25th, $4.4 million was drained from various crypto wallets uh, on the blockchain because they were storing their private keys or their seed phrases inside of LastPass. So what does that mean? Well, even if you don't use services like this, uh, you still could be at risk of the same type of mistakes. So let me explain exactly what that is. So basically LastPass is a password manager. So what does it do? Well, the whole idea here is, you know, if you're using the internet and you're managing multiple logins, really one of the best practices is that you don't use the same password for every website because if someone found out one password, well, then they could log to any website where you have the exact same username or email address, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So you have services like password managers, which lets you, you know, generate new passwords and also back up your passwords for these website logins into a single app and that gets backed up into the cloud. Now, the problem with this is people use this also for their crypto wallets in some cases to store their private keys or their seed phrases, all right? So quick recap, if you're not familiar with what those terms exactly are, you know, your private key is basically like a password to an individual crypto wallet. If you just put that private key in, your wallet can generate, you know, your keys and you can start uh, your address and you can start, you know, signing transactions that way. And your seed phrase is really like a long sentence, all right, of 12 words usually that, you know, can boot up multiple crypto wallets, like the passwords, like the keys to the kingdom for your entire wallet of multiple addresses. So people store these in password managers all the time, which can be a big mistake. So why is that? Well, these are centralized services, which back all the stuff up on a cloud server. And if someone's able to access that data, whether it's internally inside of LastPass, I'm not saying that's what happened here necessarily. Uh, or externally from a malicious hacker outside of LastPass and they find that information, well, they have direct access to your funds that can completely clean you out. And that's more or less what happened here, okay? So now, even if you don't use the LastPass app, you've never even heard of it, uh, you still could be making some of these same types of mistakes and I want you to understand what those could be so protect yourself. So one option is if you don't use LastPass and you use another password manager like 1Password, okay, you could still be at the risk of the same type of thing. But even if you'd never heard of a password manager before you started watching this video, um, you might be making some mistakes that could expose you to the same type of attack vector and what some of those could be. Well, basically, it, generally speaking, if you store your private keys or your seed phrases in any type of digital format, whether it's on your local device or in the cloud, you could be exposing yourself to a very similar risk. So let me explain some examples of that. So now before I say this, like, obviously there's no perfect way to securely store your crypto. If there was, that's what everybody would do. Every strategy has some type of trade-offs. And I'll talk about some tips that you can take here in a minute. But basically, here's some things that you should know about if you're going to decide to do this type of stuff and some really risky stuff. So basically, if you store your private keys or your seed phrases electronically, you know, so I'll do things like store them on Dropbox, Okay. Uh, they'll take a picture of it a lot of times. They'll think, oh, well, it's not it's not text. And then they'll take a picture of their seed phrase, their private key, and they'll put that picture on Dropbox. Well, that's a big risk because anybody who finds that picture on Dropbox can just copy it down and then access your funds. They might say, well, I'll do it in a text file. Okay, same type of deal. As someone hacks your Dropbox, they just need to access that text file for the private key or the seed phrase and they can clean you out. So definitely don't do things like email it to yourself. I mean, email is a cloud storage provider as well. Uh, you got to watch out for that type of stuff. So 
That's if you're explicitly storing it in the cloud. Now, some people will say, well, I'll just take a picture of it and keep it on my phone or I'll write it down in a note on my phone, okay? But that's a, obviously if you lose your phone, you're in big trouble. But the other big problem there is that, you know, a lot of times our phones are backing things up in the cloud, sometimes outside of our awareness, right? Like if you have an iPhone and you have iCloud automatically turned on and you take a picture, well, your picture is going to get backed up in iCloud. Sure, you know, you might be able to like hide it or like turn that off or not sign up for it, but it's really easy to make the mistake of not realizing that your data actually got backed up somewhere outside your awareness. We've seen things like iCloud get hacked in the past with, you know, celebrity photos and things like that. And your private keys are not necessarily safe in this regard. So in general, you know, storing your private keys, your receive phrases in any type of digital format is going to have some type of risks associated with it. Okay. Now, one thing you can do is add a layer of encryption to this. So if you store in a text file and back it up in the cloud, it could be an encrypted text file, but you have to understand you have to not forget the encryption key to that, or you know, you can't forget the password if you have one to unlock that file, because if you do, well, your stuff's toast. So what are some potential alternatives to this? Well, again, I can't give you a foolproof strategy that has no risks associated with it, but I can tell you uh, what lots of other people do and prefer in this regard. So, you know, one popular thing is to get a hardware wallet, okay, where you have this device that's outside your computer. It's like you're seeing on my screen here, um, where you, you know, it, it, the private key never leaves the device, okay? So this is a preferred method for a lot of people. Obviously, not all hardware wallets are credited equally. We've seen some issues with some hardware wallets in the past, I won't name any names, leaking, you know, user information, never private keys necessarily, or C phrases. Um, you know, through data breaches. So just something to be concerned about. As you choose that, I'll let you look up and figure out who that was. So the nice thing about hardware wallets is you have to have this physical hardware in order to authorize any transactions. So somebody can't just like, you know, hack into your computer and start making transactions because your, your sensitive information is stored in the device itself and you have to authorize it by obtaining the actual device. Now, that being said, hardware wallets also can give people a false sense of security for a few reasons, because if you sign a malicious transaction with your hardware wallet, well, you're still signing the transaction and authorizing it, and you could you know, get drained that way. Now, also a hardware wallet, you have to back up the seed phrase. And that goes back to the problem I was talking about before, is where do you back it up if you can't back it up digitally? So basically, you have a couple options. One is you could just memorize it, all right? And, um, you know, not write it down anywhere. Now, obviously, that has some issues if you became incapacitated or, you know, God forbid, uh, you passed away and someone needed to access that stuff. It doesn't do you any good. Now, another alternative is you could write it down on paper and not store it digitally, but you also have to store it safely where someone can't find it. All right. And also, you have to make sure it can't get destroyed because if you store it in a house and the house burns down, then, you know, access to your funds are gone. You know, to get around that problem, sometimes people will actually store their private keys or receive phrases in metal, okay? That's hard to destroy, like if a fire happened or something like that. Or you can just etch it into a metal that's, you know, virtually indestructible, at least way better than paper. And some people prefer that because it's harder to destroy. Some people also prefer to use things like tamper-proof bags if they're storing any sensitive data inside of them, maybe they store a private key off site, then they'll know if that bag was accessed or something like that. All right. So th those are some potential options that you could pursue if you wanted to back up your seed phrase for a hardware wallet, for example. Uh, now, in addition to hardware wallets, some people use multi-signature wallets where essentially you have uh, some type of wallet where you have to have multiple different private keys in order to authorize a transaction, hence multi-signature. So if you want to transfer funds, you might have three of five different available private keys have to sign those transactions. You could do two of three. There's various schemes. But the idea is if one private key gets leaked, then, you know, it's not going to be able to completely drain the funds. And, you know, you could back up the seed phrases or uh, private keys, to those wallets in different locations or something like that to prevent the risk of losing access to those, uh, you know, with the methods that I've talked about right before this. As that being said, again, there's no foolproof way to completely back all this stuff up safely where no one could ever access it, where you could also never lose it. That's kind of the tension uh, that you're caught between here. But, um, you know, just storing your private keys and seed phrases in plain text on a cloud in some form or fashion or on a device that could get accidentally synced to the cloud um, has significant risks associated with it, just like we saw in this uh, breach where $4.4 million was stolen from LastPass. So these are things you have to understand 
if you're a long-term player in this space and you know don't want to lose access to your funds as they you know hopefully appreciate in value so let me know what you think down in the comment section below you know, were you a victim of this i really hope not watching this video do you have any tips that you want to share with other people on how to stay safely store your crypto is there a certain hardware wallet provider that you like um do you not like certain ones do you think hardware wallet's a bad idea I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. And once you leave your comment, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get ahead of the next crypto wave and become a blockchain master, then I can show you to do that step-by-step -step start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, make sure you're watching Dapiversity.